Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and today we're going to cut four types of rabbits with the router table, including some clever interlocking rabbits that'll make your project stronger and easier to assemble. Before we get started, let me give you a few tips that you can apply to any router table rabbits. Even if you're using a bearing guided rabbiting bit, it's a good idea to use a router table fence as well. It'll make the cut easier and safer. If you insist on using the guide bearing alone, use a starter pin to avoid kickback at the beginning of the cut. While the bit's bearing will determine the width of your rabbit, the height should be adjusted gradually with test cuts to sneak up on a proper fit. If you're rabbiting on the end of a workpiece, use a backer to prevent it from twisting away from the fence as you move it. This will also prevent tear out where the bit exits the cut. Tear out can happen on the edge of a workpiece too, especially if you must cut against the grain. A solution is to set the fence to take a very shallow cut at first. Since you're removing less material, the tear out may be greatly reduced or eliminated altogether. Then follow up with the second pass to the full depth. Another option is to use a knife to sever the fibers along what will become the shoulder of the rabbit before the router bit has a chance to tear them out. Now let's get to the joinery. Rockler Woodworking and Hardware is simply a great company. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to support the online woodworking community and to help preserve this craft we love for future generations. I hope you return the favor by visiting their website using the link below this video. First up is a double rabbit joint. This is nothing more than two rabbits seated together. It's an excellent joint for aligning the panels of cabinet boxes and other large casework during assembly. I lay out where each rabbit will be located with a pencil. Each is half as wide as the thickness of the mating workpiece. I'm using a simple straight bit, which I set to just under my pencil line. Then I set the fence so the bit will be near, but not right up to the other line. Both halves of the joint are cut with the workpiece flat on the table and the ends against the fence. The first test fit will tell me how much I need to raise my bit and move my fence back so I can take more material away from each half and achieve a well-fitting joint. Next up is a dado rabbit combo. This joint is especially useful if you want to cut a dado but your bit doesn't match the thickness of your mating workpiece. You see a lot of these in old furniture that's made with more limited tools than we have today. The first step is to cut a simple dado about halfway through the board's thickness. The mating rabbit is cut just like we did in the last joint, with the bit slightly lower than required at first and the fence slightly closer to the bit. Small adjustments are then made to achieve a fit with little room for glue. A locking rabbit is similar to the dado rabbit combo, except it's on the end of the workpiece. Not only does this joint make casework easier to assembly, but it adds mechanical strength to the corners. It's ideal for things like drawers. Carefully mark the thickness of the mating workpiece on the board that will receive the dado. The dado will be cut on the end grain side of that line. Use a bit that's about half as wide as the workpiece is thick. Then use a pencil to mark the location of the mating rabbit. This mark isn't as critical because we will again sneak up on the proper height and fence position to achieve a good fit. A dovetail rabbit isn't stronger than a standard rabbit, but it sure looks fancier. To cut this joint, I'm using a 3 quarter inch wide dovetail bit with a height set to about 2 thirds the thickness of my workpiece. The fence setting is more critical. It must be set so the bit cuts equally as wide as it does high. I recommend eyeballing it first, then cutting a pair of scraps, one flat on the table, the other on end, using push blocks to keep them both stable as you cut. Make adjustments to the fence position and recut both halves until the joint is nice and flush. Good, well-fitting joinery can make or break your work, so take your time to get your tools dialed in. It'll pay off in stronger and better looking projects. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. 